things been the last couple of days? Well, the last couple of days, really, yesterday, you know, um, I had to take a day on Wednesday to go down the road and explain what I was up to, <laughs> break the news to the family. Um, but yesterday we trained, trained twice, and uh, yeah, it was great. It was a brilliant day, weather-wise, perfect day for training, um, which helps. And uh, it was enthusiastic, energetic. It was everything that I wanted in the first day, so it was good. It was enjoyable. So what you've seen is the job what you expected, or is it going to be more difficult? I, I mean, I can't tell from one day's training, you know. I mean, I'll see more tomorrow. Um, but I was encouraged yesterday. I think there are elements of it that um, I think if we can uh, harness in the right way, then we can, you know, um, be, be be optimistic. You know, I think that uh, there'll be work to be done. There'll be changes to be made. Um, what those changes are, I've, I've not decided that yet. Um, but you know, I, I, the, the the thing I would say I'd say again is I'm encouraged by what I saw yesterday. Now the game, first game against Celtic, is that a, a good, is there a, such a thing as a good game to have, first of all, the, playing against obviously the defending champions? Well, I mean, I think as a footballer, you know, um, you want to play in good games, you know, you want to play against Celtic, you want to test yourself against Celtic, you know, when I was playing, you wanted to test yourself against Rangers and Celtic for when I was at Aberdeen, for, you know, you wanted to test yourself against Aberdeen and Rangers when I was at Celtic, you know, they, they, they were the top games at that time. Um, so the top game in the division at the moment is to play against Celtic so I think uh, they should have no fears of that um, I've not actually checked maybe um, someone will tell me but I mean I don't know for instance what the last 10 results that Motherwell have had against Celtic are you know so you know what can what, what what's the worst that can happen you know you, you can lose a game of football you know but equally you could win it so I, I think we should go into the game with absolutely no fears of anything and um, I'll try and set them out in a way that will give them some freshness, that will give them some fresh ideas, some new ideas and give us a chance of you know winning the game. I mean, that's really what I tried to look into the depth of the squad yesterday, you know, to see behind the, 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 the screen, as it were, to see what potential there was and try and harness some of that on Saturday to give us a chance. Stephen was talking about perhaps there's been a bit of a lack of belief, a bit of lack of confidence, obviously, and that, I guess, comes with going on a losing run, whereas the flip side is that confidence comes with winning games, but it's a, how do you get that confidence instilled initially to, to, to allow them to you know make the, the, the correct final pass and so on? Yeah, well, I think as a manager, you know, you're a sports psychologist as well, and, you know, that's the job of a manager. Um, even when you're not getting results, is somehow to you know, instill some belief, you know, that what you're doing is right. And I think that's the thing tomorrow. I think what I've got to do tomorrow is I've got to make sure that I learn something tomorrow. So regardless of results, you know, I've got to go into the game next Saturday against Aberdeen, having gained some insight into the the potential and the ability of the squad and of the team, of the team, obviously. Um, and I think that, that that is an exciting thing for me. You know, by the end of the game tomorrow, I have learned a lot. Um and maybe they'll have learned a little bit about themselves as well. So there are certain things I'm going to ask of them um, that uh, I expect. Um, and uh, the, the, the absolute minimum of that is obviously the commitment, you know. So with that, and I think with a, a sort of slightly different message than they've had of late, um, and I don't see a better message, I see a different message, um, then we could start to maybe incrementally improve. Thank you, thank you. So the last time you played, you had a pre-season to, to effect change and improve. You must have also got out the clubs before, and made all the season. Was there a difference when you've taken over and made all the season? How do you get that improvement when you have just have, have to take the game on? Uh, yeah, well, I've done that on several occasions. You know, I, you know, I did it at uh, Brighton after a few games, went in there and got promoted. I went into Millwall after a few games and won the league. Um, you know, so it's possible to go in and be effective. You know, when I joined both those clubs, they were sort of languishing, sort of ninth or tenth, something like that, in their divisions, and you know, ended up with a very good outcome by the end of the season. So, um, you know, I think you can do it. It's a different way of doing it than, of course, going in and having the whole pre-season. But you know, sometimes, you know, uh, you guys know you work better to a deadline. You know, and then for me, the deadline Saturday. You know, so you know, I've not got like three weeks to prepare them and, 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 and wonder and look at this and look at that. 
you've got to get on with it, you know. So I've got to make decisions today about how to approach it, how to play, the shape of the team, you know, how to stop Celtic, uh, but still be effective going in the other direction. So I've got to do that in one day, but that's fine because there'll be a lot of it I'll get wrong and there'll be a lot of it I'll get right, and we'll take that on to the next game. And as I said earlier, we'll have learned a lot. And you'll have uh, a few experienced lads here as well that we hope would be able to adapt quickly to you. Your ideas when you're thinking of the Celtic game. Yeah, well, I think that the experienced lads uh, over their careers will be used to change of managers. Um, they have changed clubs, they have changed managers within clubs. It's nothing new to them, you know. Players get on with it. Um, the boys, you know, uh, I mean, the experienced ones in the dressing room, um, you know, uh, McManus, I know a little bit um, with his connection with Gordon in particular. Um, Lasley, Clarkson I know very, very well Hamill I know very, very well uh, Pearson I know a little bit like Mick you know, so you know, I'm fairly familiar uh, 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 Scott McDonald of course you know, I mean, I've had uh, uh, telephone conversations with Scott uh, just prior to him coming here um, about you know, moving and helping them to move so you know, I have a decent relationship with these boys already so that helps and I'm sure um, they'll be wanting to help me and help the club you know, move this the younger element of the squad forward, you know, so yeah, they're going to be a big asset for me. Is it going to be a bit of a strange experience for you when you walk out the tunnel again before kickoff? It's always a strange experience, a new club, you know, and as much as I'm familiar with a lot of things, um, you know, when you go out there for the first game, it's always a, a, a new experience because things do change. Um, but it's something I enjoy, you know. Um, I think you go to any club, you've got to prove yourself. You know, I don't think it's any different here. What I would hope is that the fact that I've been here before and I think been relatively successful, it means it would give me a chance to, to prove myself, you know. So um, I know that from day one you've got to start to prove yourself and I've not got any problems with that. Um, and that starts tomorrow, but um, I'm looking forward to it. Is that your message to perhaps say a, a section of supporters who were like, hmm, don't know if another manager, a manager come back for a second time is the right way? Is that the sort of message you would say to them? Well, I, I, is there a group that are saying that? Well, I'm saying that every, every, every club will have a section that says... I'm well, sure you know, listen, I, I, I remember uh, when I went to Brighton, there was a section of supporters apparently through the internet and stuff, you know, saying, you know, why are they taking Mark McGee? I did, just had a successful time at Millwall, had left there. And uh, then I was there for three and a half years, and I remember the press guy there telling me that when I left... It was the exact same names that had complained about me coming that, you know, were glad to see me go. But they'd been silent for three and a half years, you know. So I don't think you can always trust these voices, you know. So I'm not going to concern myself with that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go out there and I'm going to try to prove to those people that are out there tomorrow supporting Motherwell that I am the right man. And as I said before, because of my relationship with the club and because of my affection for the club, I think I'm quite entitled to come back and I'm, uh, I'm quite looking forward to being back. You mentioned social media there, Mark, if I can go slightly on a tangent. Any sympathy with Derek McInnes with what he's had to put up with this week? With the bookmaker taking bets and well, him being sacked. Were you aware of that? I'm not aware of that. Oh, no. right, OK. Was, that's what it's again, if you're not aware Been sacked? Well, the, it was, rumour well, was in overdrive that Derek was leaving and social media had all sorts of suggestions. Well, I, 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 I think, I, you know, I was in bed last night at nine o'clock, you know, and when I went to bed at nine o'clock, I was already semi-conscious because I was so tired. I mean, my run has been from sort of last Thursday night with the polling game and the, the, the preparation for that and the excitement of that. Um, and then, of course, the disappointment of that. And then picking ourselves up and going off to Portugal on uh, a Saturday and having the Gibraltar game and the emotional game that was. That was an amazing game, you know, for the Scotland uh, team and for the Scotland supporters, given the circumstances. And then, of course, getting the call from Motherwell, going through all that on Monday, getting myself back down to Brighton to see my family back up the road. All of that has passed me by. When I leave here, I'll go and find out what you're talking about. <laughs> but, uh, but, um, in that hectic period, have you had the call from Gordon? All indications are that he's, he's, he's staying on. Has he said that? It appears to be Stuart, seems to suggest that last night. Stuart Reagan. Stuart McCall. Stuart McCall. Yeah. Supergrass. <laughs> I would make no comment on that. I think that's uh, that's Gordon's uh, decision, and Gordon will uh, uh, tell you when he's made that decision. So you've had the call. <laughs> no, no, he's not fit. No. no. Well, I, just, uh, I was just wondering, kind of alluding to your, <coughs> what you were talking about wee bit earlier on, are you, or do you have a real appetite to get back into the, the day to day frenetic activity that must be what a club manager is, as opposed to your kind of 
small periods of, of activity like like oh yeah, I mean, I, I'm on record lots of times of saying that you know it remained my ambition to be back in club football. Um, I think what I was conscious of is it's particularly in the early part. I would say probably even certainly the first eighteen months working with Gordon that I felt I had to give that my full concentration. I wanted Gordon to know I was there for him, sort of twenty four hours a day, you know, seven days a week, you know, whether we had games on or not. And that's the way it's been, you know, I've had meetings with Gordon, I go to games all the time, I speak to Gordon, um, and of course I'm there for when we have the games. So that has been an, an amazing, uh, you know, experience, you know, being involved with the national team. Um, but, you know, the timing was right, you know, we've failed to qualify, hugely disappointingly, um, and I now find myself, you know, probably having less need, um, uh, Gordon has less need for me between now and maybe next uh, uh, July or so and then I can pick it up again and we're quite clear with the club here, I'm with Gordon and with Stuart Reagan that I can continue to do uh, the Scotland job while I'm working here and you know someone asked me yesterday which one has priority, I don't think I need to prioritise any of them, I think I can do both of them mm -hmm. properly, you know simultaneously, I think that uh, the way the Scotland job works is fine it can fit in with what I do here. Do you think there are elements of what you've done with Scotland Particularly, maybe go and see so quite so many games all over the country. Obviously, looking at looking for players for Scotland, but can you bring uh, positive elements of that to Motherwell? Do you think? Oh, absolutely. You know, it's been you know different managers work in different ways, and of course, I've always been the manager until I worked with Gordon as assistant. I had never done that before, so therefore, I've always led. It's always been my kind of philosophy, if you like, and it's always been my uh, agenda. Whereas Gordon is a guy who sets that now, and now I have to kind of. Um, to the corporate line, you know, when I'm with Scotland. So, you know, therefore I'm exposed to what Gordon does. And, you know, Gordon is brilliant. You know, I don't think anybody should doubt that, you know, they have a fantastic coach and a fantastic manager leading the national team. You know, he, I, I'd never worked with Gordon before. And I can tell you over the years, I've heard Gordon say things that I've thought, mm, I don't quite agree with that. And, you know, maybe I think differently about certain things. Um, but when I've went and worked with him, and of course there are still things that him and I discussed where we don't agree entirely. But, you know, I can assure you, that he is a brilliant coach and he's a great manager for the Scotland team and I'll take a lot from what I've seen Gordon do in a way I've seen Gordon work uh, and add it to what I've you know um, gleaned myself over the whatever it is um, now uh, since about 1991 or something I've been managing you know an important thing for me is I wanted back in as well because I want to try and get to a thousand games you know, and I don't know what I'm on at the moment, 800 and odd or something like that. You know, so that was important to me that has been, remained my ambition I want to try and get to a thousand games as a manager it's always been there, so the last job we always think yeah. about like that. Yeah, as I say, I had that little time when I felt I needed to be with Gordon um, and not think about another job, but for the last year or so, I've started to think that maybe it was time I, I pushed a bit harder to get a job.